Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I'm releasing this video now that there is open water swimming available to most people and that means it's a great opportunity to practice some of the tactics I'm going to discuss in this video. Now when I was trying to learn triathlon and especially water tactics because it used to be one of my weaker points in triathlon um, I didn't I could I struggled to find lots of information on how uh, you were effectively using tactics in the water to make you that little bit faster so uh, I've just put together a short presentation on some of the um, more in-depth details in terms of what you do in certain situations and why you do what you why you do things in certain situations and there's going to be a bit of a more of a discussion video but um, I'll show you some of the things that I do and some of the tactics that I employ and then at the end I will show you what I did in the Challenge Almir race when I let out the water and that should kind of show and highlight the tactics that I say kind of work in this uh, presentation actually do have an impact in real life. So I think the first thing that we all need to understand is drafting and there's kind of two main drafting techniques. The first one is simply just sitting on someone's feet. Now the reason that this helps you through the water is that um, similar to the bike the front person is breaking the water for you. Uh, you tuck in behind them you're not having as much resistance because they've already broken up in front of you. There's also some currents and some kind of um, other forces that go on at the back of the feet which also helps pull you along slightly but it, it's more the fact that they're breaking the water in front of you. The second position is sitting on the hips. Now this is a personal favourite of mine. I find it a lot easier to sit on someone's hips than I do their feet um, and also if you are swimming with someone that is a good swimmer if they suddenly attack it kind of gives you the leg length to respond to those attacks and jump on their feet so I kind of like it as almost like a defensive move if I'm swimming with someone that's faster than me. So like when you sit on someone's feet they break the water for you so you can kind of see if you look at the photo you can kind of see how the water is dispersing around the two swimmers that are following. Now the beauty of sitting on someone's hips is that actually there's a lot of disruption of water in uh, amongst the hips and um, you can refer to these as teddy currents and essentially what it, what it means is is there's disruption to the water and it actually glues you to the person that's swimming with you. So not only do you get the water broken in front of you, but you actually slow the person, you can actually sit on the hip, essentially, and the person that's working, it will slow them down and it will help you pull you along. Now, one of the things that I used to do when I was a swimmer at a club was I used to get the fastest sprinters to swim next to me and I would just try and see how long I could sit on the hip and work out the ways of best kind of getting on top of these um, teddy currents and this disruption of the water and pulling me along. Now, the beauty of this um, is that not only does the water get broken in front of you, but it also means that you're kind of being sucked along with the person swimming next to you. Now, which one should you use and why should you use it? Now, sitting on the hips is a great way to pull away from people. And as we discussed in the last slide, if you're sitting on someone's hip, uh, you're actually stuck to them a bit like glue. So if you if they're going really hard and you kind of slow down, it will prevent them from pulling away. So what you're essentially doing is you're making that person work at the front a little bit harder. It would almost be like uh, being on the side of a cyclist and holding onto their saddle and they wouldn't be able to get away from you as easy. So sitting behind someone's feet, you kind of get the benefits of not working as hard, but you're not necessarily tiring down the swimmer in front of you. Whereas if you would sit on someone's hip, you are kind of, if you are not putting in a similar effort to them, you are kind of slowing their ability to, to actually swim fast. So I'll give you an example of where I'd use the different, different techniques. Now I would sit on someone's feet if I'm trying to get away or I'm trying to, um, bridge towards a pack or we're trying to get away or just trying to get position I would sit on the feet and that's purely because I get the benefits of sitting behind them but it doesn't make it much harder for the person in front of me to swim away whereas when I'm sitting on someone's hips I'm doing that because 
typically it's a faster swimmer and I will sit on their hips to make it harder for them to pull away from me whilst also helping me being pulled along slightly and getting the benefits of the water going round me and then breaking the water so sitting on the hips you tire out your opponent quicker but it also makes them the reason it's making them tire quicker is because it's making it harder for them so if you're doing any sort of bridging work that's what's it's going to make it much harder for them so when i see big packs and big um, groups of some of the age group athletes or the professional athletes uh, trying to bridge over it's it's kind of like you're defeating the goal of what you're trying to do because you're just tiring out whoever's towing you along so um, that's when I would so if I'm trying to bridge over I'm actually trying or I'm caring about the pure speed of what I'm trying to do I'll sit on their feet whereas if I'm trying to be a bit more tactical tire people out um, save some energy myself or just try and slow down some of the quicker swimmers I will sit on the hips now one of the most important things that you can do in the swim is get a good start and the problem with a lot of swim starts is over that first 100 meters everyone in the race good swimmer bad swimmer moderate swimmer whatever you want to call yourself everyone's kind of first hundred time will be very very similar and this is particularly the case in a middle distance triathlon or a full distance triathlon everyone's hundred pace will be within one or two seconds give or take for that first kind of get out speed or around your pace that you want to hold now the problem with that is it means that you've got a lot of people trying to achieve the same thing holding a very similar pace so you know what are the ways that you can implement a good start now I've got a very very basic um, animation uh, set up essentially the dots are swimmers the red circles are just the starting boys and you'll see that one of the dots is uh, labeled green um, we're just going to consider the green swimmer a a good swimmer a strong swimmer let's put it that way so in an ideal world kind of a swimming start would look something like this you know the the, the strong swimmer goes and everyone behind them kind of slots in nicely behind that that person give or take a few places so once again nice and simple slot in behind that quick swimmer so you're probably thinking to yourself well I want to be those yellow dots I want to be that person that sits in right behind that quick swimmer and it's something that I see a lot in races and um, it hasn't happened to me very often but now I'm getting a little bit more of a name for myself of being a uh, fast swimmer in the long longer events people are starting to you know try and swim next to me or, or I see a lot of people trying to swim next to the fast swimmer of the race or whatever um, that may be so what a lot of people do is they try and get really stuck in close to that green swimmer now if you looked at the perfect start or the perfect getaway you'd see that brilliant they've slotted in straight behind that fast swimmer they're going to sit on the feet they've got really good positioning however what i find with going next to someone that is a quick swimmer is you're at a very big risk of someone overlapping you so in this case we've got the same green quick swimmer we've got a yellow uh, the yellow person's right next to the green swimmer because they're the fastest swimmer of the race but the gray swimmer next to that they are going to try and get on that fast swimmer's hip or feet just as quick as you are and if you hesitate or if they just happen to be a little bit more gifted or they've just having a good day this is what kind of tends to happen so that person comes straight across and then you're pushed in behind now you can see this yellow circle is now very very isolated so again sw quick swimmer gets away and that um, swimmer next to the left is pushing over and then you're kind of forced to slot in behind and it happens a lot it's happened it happens to me all the time especially when i was doing the shorter races i would be next to someone that i wanted to go and get out with and i've just had people come in from both sides and just go woof and then you get into just the the, the jostling and the tussling and it's all kind of you know it's not people meaning to do it but when you've got lots of arms going fast trying to get it to a certain position where there's not space there is contact and as soon as you get contact in the swim it is a lot slower so if I can't get the ideal position that I would want which will be later in the video I like to have the quicker swimmer in sight 
but I like to be a couple of spaces away. Uh, and that's simply because if someone wants to overlap um, or, or someone's kind of further away, they're probably not going to overlap me to try and get onto the feet. Or at least I've got a little bit more room before someone that wide can kind of come across at an angle to join on to the, the uh, faster swimmer. So just in this example, um, you know, I'm not necessarily as high up as the people that were right next to that swimmer, but I'm kind of within an, enough reach and that's fine because I've still on the uh, on the far side, which gives me open water, free space to swim so I can swim my own stroke. So I'm quite happy with that. And like I said, you might have some people on the other side to overlap. But what I would find is that if you're in a big mass start, the chances are if I'm two spaces away from that green swimmer, there's probably another faster swimmer to the other side that will then pull the packs away from you. So you've kind of got clear water and it will also mean that you can go across to the two different packs. Again, this is all very kind of, I've set the presentation to show what I'm trying to dictate and this might not happen, but if you're not sat, if you've got that swimmer in sight and you're not kind of jam packed, uh, next to him you've got less chance to kind of be crushed in that initial start but then still have uh, be in contention of, of being on the hips or, or being on the feet um, and i'd much rather be slightly further back but have a bit more room than going kind of getting crushed in the middle and another thing as well the chances are if you know the quickest swimmer in the wave or you know someone that's notorious for being a quick swimmer the chances are you've got quite a lot of people around them and you can tell when someone's a good swimmer looking at big mass starts because you will have maybe single row and then you'll see the good swimmer and they'll have like four or five people kind of all in amongst them kind of double row or even triple row so um, you kind of get away from that jostling and the, and if someone is trying to sit on the feet of a quick swimmer you're going to have a lot of competition so i just like to be that little bit further out so i have some space to move in so i'm sacrificing a bit of time but i feel like in most cases than not you have a bit more freedom to kind of move around and kind of dictate how you race if i was to pick where i could go and um, you'll see this quite a lot in short distance racing I would love to be the two outside people. If you can get that spot so that you're right next to the boys, you have just so much control in how you do your race. The chances are faster swimmers will push themselves out to the side because of what I'm about to show you. So if I'm these two on the side, I've got kind of options really. If there is any movement in the middle, I'll just join that movement or I can just do my own thing. So in this instance, on one side, I've joined in with what's going on. On the other side, do you know what? I don't like how that pack's forming or I just want free space or, or in fact, they're not sighting right. So I'm just going to do my own thing. It gives you so much control because if people move straight over, all you need to do is just go, okay, well, I'm going to move over a little bit more and you have that space. So I always find that my best starts have been when I can, if, if I can be right up next to the boys, that's the best way that I find that I can get a good start. And, a, and maybe not always the fastest start, but it's definitely the most consistent in terms of kind of putting me in a good space, giving me the freedom to move around. And then if I want to be involved with any packs or anything like that, I can do. Uh, and it's something that will be demonstrated later in the video with my example of Challenge Almir. Currents is the biggest factor that you will feel if you race um, events when it's kind of offshore, so you're in sea swims or some river swims affected by the currents and the tide. Currents have the biggest noticeable difference uh, to your event and they're probably the least known aspect of open water swimming for a lot of triathletes. I had no idea how much currents affected the race and the race dynamic until I swam with open water swimmers in kind of conditions that were affected by currents and they absolutely blew me out of the water and I didn't even know how they'd done it. I would look and go, how on earth have they done that? And it's really, really obvious of who swum in a lot of sea conditions and who hasn't. And I feel like, especially for colder countries, when 
the seas tend to be, you know, of a colder temperature, can struggle sometimes when they do go to hot climates, go in the sea kind of the first time and then don't know why something's happening. Now, I'm not an expert on currents, but a current is essentially just a force that pushes you in a direction and the easiest way to tell if there's a current is if you just lie on your back and don't propel yourself in any way, so just literally lie on your back and take a reference point on land and you'll notice that if there's a current in place you'll be pushed and the quicker that you're pushed in a direction the stronger the currents. Now the best way to learn about currents uh, and a lot of other kind of tidal uh, effects on open water swimming is to talk to surfers. They are they have a great level of knowledge about how the waters will push you and they're just great if, if you have any if you have access to talk to any um, sailors or any surfers they can teach you a lot about currents especially in your area. Now currents can sometimes be deceiving so this is just a kind of a bird's eye shot of uh, where I train in Eastbourne and Typically, I prefer swimming to the pier. We, we start um, at a lifeguard beach and we swim to the pier. I like swimming towards the pier because you have the waves with you and you're not swimming against waves. However, the currents typically push you in the opposite direction in, in where I live. Now, that's why I think currents are hard because they can be deceptive. Because I'm swimming with the waves, I'm not getting kind of water in my mouth and I can kind of feel like I'm being pushed by the wave, kind of as a, like an illusion, I feel like I'm going faster one way. But the difference in times is significant and the current will push me and it's so much easier swimming one way than, than what I originally thought. So when it comes to currents, it really does affect how you swim to objects. So I've just set up a little triangle here of boys and this is a swimmer and in most kind of lake swims I am swimming straight to that boy. You know I think we can all agree that that is probably the most logical way of swimming. So if I was in a normal um, conditions I'd just swim straight to it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply a current. So the current just happens to be moving in this direction. What a lot of people do is they use the arrow and they go the most direct way is to swim straight to the buoy. Now, if it's a strong current, this is typically what happens. Start sighting towards the buoy and the current will slowly push them off that line. Then they'll, about middle way, kind of go, oh, I'm now in line with it. And then at the last minute, they'll just swerve back in around the buoy. And this is because when you're swimming in that straight line, the current is constantly pushing you. So you can swim in that straight line, but if you're swimming in that straight line and the current is pushing you, you're just going veering off the line until you realize you've veered off that line and then you realize too late and you do that little curvy bit at the end. So what you should do is if you've got a current pushing you one way, you should sight slightly against that current to where you're trying to go. So in this case, I want to go to the red boy. The arrow is pushing me in a certain direction. So in order to counteract that, I have to swim, I have to sight or swim to the boy, but slightly across. So that when I swim on that line, just the, the nature of the current will take me more towards the object. So in this case, I'm going to sight slightly to one side of that boy and it will slowly push me over. Now, this is where a little bit of the experience comes in and how much of a gap that you have to sight away from the buoy kind of dictates on how strong the current is. So, the stronger the current, the more you have to, you have to aim further away from the buoy and kind of the weaker the current, the more that you can get away with it. Now, so we've swum to the middle buoy. So, again, with the current, but this time you'll notice that rather than swimming genuinely kind of towards the arrows direction from the buoy so from the from the original we're kind of from this original picture we are swimming to we the current is essentially helping us move over because we're on the outside and we're going more into the middle so this is actually helping us get to the buoy 
Now, when we're here, the current is actually pushing us away from where we're trying to go because we're in the middle and it's pushing us kind of away from where we want to go. So if I wanted to look sight directly to that buoy, I will slowly veer off to the side because the current is helping push me across. So what you have to do in this instant is you then have to sight inside the buoy because that adjustment of the current will push you over. So if you sight slightly inside of that buoy, the current will push you slowly over to the side. So in this instance, I'm sighting there and it slowly moves me over outside that buoy. So essentially the current will push you naturally and it will just, you just have to adjust where you're aiming for to get to the, the buoy effectively. Another thing with currents that you need to be aware of is that if you are swimming with the current, it's better to be further out from shore because the current will be stronger the further away from the shore. Because when you go in towards the shore, so if you look at this case of, of Eastbourne, we've got things called groins and that basically stops the um, flow of sand going up the beach. If you stick close to those groins, it disrupts the current because it doesn't have, it just gets broken up a little bit because it's shallower. So you're kind of getting a lot of force through a smaller gap. So you don't really feel the current as much. So when you're swimming against the current, the closer that you are to the shore, the better it is for you. Whereas if you are swimming with the current, being a little bit further out will help push you along because the current isn't disturbed as much um, through the deeper sections of the water. So that's just another tip. So if you're kind of swimming uh, typically with a beach dart, you might swim out uh, and then you might swim slightly across the shore and then get out at a second location. That's when if you are swimming against currents, you need to be tight to the uh, river banks or tight to the um, sea uh, shore. Or, um, or, But when you have currents with you, that's when you want to be kind of more out into the sea. So when we're talking about currents and starts that involve going out to a buoy, swimming along the coastline, and then getting out at a second location. In most cases, if there wasn't a current, the best place to be would be that yellow spot. And the reason for that is that you just have the most direct line. So essentially, you are just, if you swim the same speed, you're going to get there quicker, just like that. So what happens when there's a current, especially a strong one, what typically happens if you're that inside person, you will, if you're sighting that way, everyone gets pushed over. And now what that causes is typically you're going to have maybe one or two people alongside you. If they don't know to swim against or, or sight slightly out from the buoy, they're going to be pushed straight over, which then will crush you on that inside. So as you can see, that yellow swimmer has been pushed across and then they've had to readjust round. Now, when I did a race it was the brighton sea swim i was told about a really good swimmer really good open water swimmer and i thought oh i'm going to watch him because it was more about that day was more about learning for me than than getting a, a decent well it was about getting a decent swim but it was more about you know learning and how i was doing within within the training block it wasn't an out and out race for me but i was told he was a very good swimmer so i kind of put myself next to him he's got a bit of a reputation for winning these events and um i wondered what he was doing and when we first started with this strong current, we started the furthest to the right. So we were the furthest away from the boy. And he just swam straight, just swam straight out in front of us. And what happened was I followed him. And because it was such strong current, with us swimming straight, it moved us over to the boy, the fastest. And everyone on our inside was then pushed and they had to readjust themselves around the boy. So... We swam directly straight, straight to the buoy, and everyone on that inside kind of misjudged how strong the current was. And just without mis that misjudgment, they got pushed right across. Now, it did help that the guy that I was next to was a local lad in Brighton, so he knew how strong the current was going to be. But sometimes, being the furthest away from the starting currents is beneficial, because if you're going to be that inside swimmer, he would have had to have sighted, he would have had to have swam so far away from the buoy that he'd have actually ended up swimming more distance overall to hit that buoy cleanly 
than we would being as far out as we could be just swimming straight. So that's just another thing that if you are looking at getting a good start, sometimes when it is a strong current, being the furthest away from the buoy with that strong current, with just swimming straight, it will push you over and you'll swim the less, uh, the least amount, but you will actually hit that buoy first. And the only way that you can do this is if you if you practice it or practice some starts with, with buoys out when it is strong current conditions. So sighting tips this is kind of the last sort of thing that we're going to go over um a lot of people do different techniques i try and just keep my head as low as possible i usually do about six strokes and i'll, I'll take a look but if i'm leading a race i will do much more just to make sure that i'm on i'm on track um but quite commonly you know sighting is is regular kind of every six strokes for me now one of the things with sighting is just for that clean start, I don't sight until after 20 strokes of swimming in that start, just to get out as quickly as I can. And the reason that it's around 20 is because I can swim about 20 strokes, which is just about just over 25 meters without veering too much off from my center line. Some people have to look before that, but I don't sight in that first bit because sometimes the first bit of that start is just to get out. It's not about you know, trying to look, oh, I'm going on my perfect line. It's just trying to get out in front of people. And as soon as you're in front of people or you've got out in a stronger position, that's when you can kind of readjust because once people are on your hips or behind you, it's kind of too late for them to really be sighting and looking around. They're, they're behind you and you, you have the decision just to kind of maneuver yourself how you would like. Now, the biggest sighting tip that I learned and kind of the only real sighting tip that, that is, is very important um, that, that some people don't know, I think most people know, um kind of how to sight and looking up and breathing right it doesn't really matter how you sight um there's quicker ways but you know being able to see where you go is is important but the biggest tip with sighting that i find is um just in this example we can see that there's that red uh finish banner now especially if you're doing open water or if the banners are really really far away just say there's a big wave or or you can't quite see the banner you know where is that finish banner now what i will do especially in a swim recce is i will see where that swim banner is and i will see a significant object behind that banner that's tall so in almir it happened to be one of the taller buildings um, in this case i would use the ferris wheel you know it's, it's just below that center line I know it's going to be there. So even if I put that wave, if I go towards where that circle is in the Ferris wheel, I'm going to be pretty close to where that swim exit is. And that makes a massive difference when it is wavy that you can actually see, or even if even if the boys are so far away, they're small that you can't see them, it gives a real obvious kind of representation of where it should be. And as long as I'm, as long as I know where that is in relation to where I am, I know I'm on the right track and, and sometimes when people can't see the boys they freak out and they don't know what they're doing. That's quite an easy way of actually figuring out where you're swimming to and most of the time the swim exit is near transition so even if it's not kind of a big tall building or a big tall tree or something obvious like that, usually there's kind of a, a area or, or a kind of a big mass of, of bikes that you can see and if it's so far out that you can't actually see that boy you can kind of see that, that that's that's the transition area so i'm going to go towards that and that's quite a good way if there isn't any tall objects but what i would do is scout this kind of go out to the the boy or to the boys the furthest the farthest ones out or even if it's from the start i would look to where the boy the first boy is see if there's anything important or any kind of uh, obvious structures then I'd swim to that boy. How well did that represent where that boy was? Good, bad, okay, I'll adjust it. Then I'll look to the second boy. Oh, okay, there's there's a tall tree. I know that that's what I'm trying to swim to. And just kind of go around the boys. Once you've worked out kind of significant structures or things around them, that's where it can it can make life a lot easier for sighting. In in Almir, the, the, the boys were quite far away. So I had a tall tree for the furthest boy and it was pretty much swim to the furthest boy and then he had to swim to another far boy which was then a tall building so i swam to the tall tree to the tall building and to be honest i didn't even need to see where the boys were themselves so i was, I was so new where they were from those structures and it's also very important to do that sort of thing when 
you've got masses of, of people swimming that I can't see over all these arms and legs of what people are doing, but I can still see that tall tree or that tall building. So it does make a big, it does make a big difference to how you race if you can't see the boys or you have problems seeing the boys and just using another visual representation of where they should be. It makes a massive difference and it, it also can relax people as well because I know personally if I can't see where I'm going it panics me and I get a bit frustrated because it might be that I'm swimming the wrong way or I'm swimming a little bit further out so it's a really easy way of just kind of calming the sighting and making it a lot easier for yourself. So as promised I am going to show you some of these tactics in action now they mostly revolve around the start I've explained a little bit about how I was sighting I was using as you can see in the background where some of the boys are I was using those houses and I was using some trees and that was very helpful in this instance I did, I did have a kayak um, leading uh, he was out there le leading for the swimmer but you can't rely on the kayaks because sometimes because they're watching behind they do weave a little bit so I was still looking at you know those far houses um, lots of different markers like that now this is just the start and from the start you can see that all these colored hats are on the right hand side now the in this race the pro athletes were given colored hats and this was my first ever long long distance race so I I, I didn't have any particular hat but these are all colored hats I knew that they were colored hats and you can see how bunched up this side is and even for not a lot of swimmers I think there was 30 ish people in this event there still wasn't a lot of people but they're all bunched in this one area and I knew that there was going to be some fast swimmers there but I knew it was going to get a bit jostly so I decided to set up all the way over to the left hand side so if they pan over to the left hand side I was the second swimmer in so you can actually see me I'm um, this far one here this is me um, so I'm starting here I believe I've got the other GB next to me and uh, this person behind me um, but I was this guy here so I was t I had a lot more room when they're all bunched up and I also had clear water and to be honest probably because we were swimming kind of toward a, a slight diagonal both sides I probably actually was only kind of risking maybe losing a couple of seconds if that I I'd, so I for two seconds I had no kind of known quick swimmers because they all had special hats I mean I didn't know anyone in the race before I went in but they, I wouldn't be around any known hats so I knew that there wasn't any you know uber fast swimmers around me or at least known fast swimmers around me so I wouldn't have to contend with that I didn't have to contend with more people for two seconds you know it's a big much bigger gain so I started in the least kind of best position so that I could gain position over people Okay, and then we start so I am on the far side and you can see on the left hand side it's kind of starting to already bunch up before we've even started so over here we can see it's already starting to bunch up and this is me with 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 the swimmers on the left on the um, kind of right hand side from what we're viewing but you can see this massive pack here all forming all kind of especially here all kind of jostling we've got swimmers over here now, if you remember what I said at the start, I said all the people on this side had the kind of known hats. They were the, the you know the professionals that were known. Yet we've got one, two, three. All of us had gone away clearly, and these guys arguably they weren't sitting behind me as well as they could have been. But but we went clear, and on this side you can see that it's really kind of bunched up, and there are some very fast swimmers in this event. But we gained so much time over them because they were all jostling for position. So from starting in a less favourable position for a reason, they are all bunched up and we've we've kind of got clear. And I've I've got clear. And that and that was not because I was a faster swimmer by any point. You can see here all the the jostling, all, all the fighting here. So I had gained all the advantage that I would have lost starting where I started I've got clear water I'm not having to fight uh, in here or not contacting anyone and again like I said you know I'm not the fastest swimmer by a long way but 
by putting in some simple tactics, I got some clear water, I could get away, and these guys had a lot harder of a start. So in this instance, it was simple tactics that helped me get the lead that I needed to come out first in the water in this event. And it all happened within the first, you know, 100 meters because because there were some really strong swimmers in that inside. They were probably spending too much time kind of jostling and and they didn't have as a relaxed start as me. So where I didn't have to spike my heart rate to get out and it was more relaxed, I just kind of got away at my own pace, didn't exert any more energy than I needed. And therefore, when I got to the first boy, I wasn't needing to recover. I could just push on the pace. And that's when I think the race kind of, that's when I got clear. And that's the only, and that's the only reason I got clear was because I got such a clean swim. I got away and I didn't spike my heart rate. And it was purely because I took a couple of seconds just to look where people were, look back and kind of go, I think I know what to do. I'm going to do it and that's the best option for me. So I hope this video has helped some people that maybe have not had any information given to them about some of the swim tactics or they've never kind of experienced or, or known maybe as much information uh, as this video. I hope this helped everyone. I hope you've enjoyed. I know it's been a bit of a long video, but um, just from everyone at Challenge during these times, stay safe and all the best for your family. Take care. Bye.